Hey there, it's Mark from Men Who Bullet. Thanks for checking out today's video where I'm going to be showing you how to set up your own bullet journal cheat sheet in the back of your bullet journal so that you can quickly and easily understand the spacing that you have in your journal to set up future spreads. I'm going to be setting up this cheat sheet today inside of a B5 notebook, but I'm also going to be showing you how I set it up in my A5 and my square notebook as well. So if you have any of these sizes, today's video is really going to help you out. At the end of this video, I'll let you know how you can grab a free downloadable printable of an A5 size grid sheet if you're interested in getting that. If you're planning along with me, grab your pencil, grab your ruler. Let's go ahead and have some fun. The overall purpose of setting up a grid spacing cheat sheet inside of your notebook is so that you can easily figure out your page spacing. Whether you're cutting your page into half, into thirds, or something more elaborate than that, this is a fantastic resource to have right in the back of your notebook. As we get started, just know I don't create a full comprehensive cheat sheet of all the different options. I like to find ones that I will most often use inside of my notebook and put those inside of there for easy reference. You can go as detailed as you want or as simple as you want, but regardless of how you want to go about it, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to set that up. So let's go ahead and do that. Before we go ahead and actually create our pages inside of our B5, I do want to show you some sizes in an A5 and a square bullet journal. So if you have one of these at home, you'll be able to pause the video and look at some of the numbers. But I do want to just talk to you about how I set them up and of course how I use them inside of each of these journals. So let's put the B5 off to the side and let's look at the A5 first. I started creating these inside of my square journal and just carried it through as I've gone through each one. But this is your standard A5 notebook. This is an Archer and Olive notebook. Specifically, this one is the Galaxy Dot Grid, but you can get any A5 size, and these are all going to be the same. The first step in setting up any of your grid spaces is going to be count the squares that you have. And I count squares instead of dots because that's usually how I set up my boxes. So inside of an A5 Archer and Olive notebook, you're going to have 38 squares going vertically down your page. In this case, these would create your columns and you have 26 squares horizontally or what would create your rows. I do something that I like to call easy math whenever I'm setting up any type of grid spacing. And what that means is the first thing I do is I take my big number and I just split it right in half because often I split my pages into halves as I go through. So inside of an A5, you're going to have 19 squares on the top and the bottom here to create that two row spacing. If you wanna create something a little bit different, what I like to do is actually box in a lot of my information. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of extra space. So I'll put two squares in between each of these and all I'm doing there is just subtracting one from each side. So 18 on your top, two in between and 18 on the bottom. To create a three row grid here, it's going to be 12 squares with one in between, or you can put one square at the top, leave a little bit of room, and do 11 with two in between if you want a little bit more space. Four rows is going to be one square at the top with nine. Those are all interconnected with one at the bottom, so it just leaves a little bit of space at the top and the bottom. Or if you want to take that full page, it'll be eight squares with two in between to create four nice and even rows. I only went to five rows because honestly, I feel like anything more than that would make these really small inside of this A5 notebook. So I can either go six with two in between, or if I want them all connected, maybe I'm doing a Monday through Friday and I want them all connected, it'll be seven squares all connected with three at the top. The same thing goes when I'm creating the columns here. So as we talked about, it's going to be 26 spaces across the page. So I'm going to do easy math and just split that right in half. So we'll have 13 on each side. So full width box connected. But if I want some space, I can go ahead and subtract one from each and we'll do 12 with two squares in between. Three columns is going to be eight squares with one in between each of those box. Or we go ahead and push those together move those to the outside with one on each side and eight all together. Four columns is going to be one square on each side with six connected, or you can move this box back and forth, of course, and have five with one in between with three extra over on the one side. And then again, the most that I feel like I would ever do, and I've never actually done this that I can think of though, was to put five all together here for five individual columns with one extra space on the side. You could go as far over or down as you want to, but these are the most common spaces that I used inside of my A5. So if you want to create this for yourself, two things you could take and pause right now if you wanted to and copy this down. Or if you want to go to the link in the description below, sign up for my newsletter. 
I will give you this A5 printable that you can cut out and put right inside of your notebook. The other one I wanna show you is Square. Square notebook was super fun. It's definitely different than the A5 size. Just for comparison here, it's a little tiny bit shorter, but extra space. It's eight inches by eight inches. And what's cool about the square though, and what I thought was neat, I didn't think about it at first, but it makes sense what I counted, is a square notebook has the same height as it does width. So I only had to use one page of my bullet journal because all I have to do is just turn my notebook to the side and I have my rows, or if it's this way, I have my columns. A lot of the same premise starts here that we did in the other ones. I can just take what is 37, which doesn't exactly cut in half perfectly. So what I had to do is put 18 on each side with one in between to set up my three columns or three rows would be 11 with one square in between and two on one end. Or I could do 11, 11, 11 with two in between or split them up into one. This was the first time actually that I ever did a cheat sheet instead of my bullet journal. So I've perfected this a little bit as I've gone through. To get four columns or four rows, it's gonna be eight squares with one in between. That'll leave two over on one side if you wanna put them on the left, or you could move those all over and have two start on the left or the right if you wanted to. Or you can go ahead and put one space in between each of those with eight squares. So you can really shift that around depending on what you need. I'd never really used five full columns, but I use these mostly for the rows. You can do six with one square in between with three on the side, or one on each side, five with one in between. So really nice and easy way to do that for a square notebook. So let's go ahead and set up this B5 size one. I've already gone in and started to sketch out a little bit of what the spaces might look like, but we're going to go over these with pen today because as I'm starting to think about potentially using a B5 size notebook for my next bullet journal, I wanna make sure visually that I can think about how I would use this page. The first thing that we have to do on our page is count how many squares that we have. And I've already done that for you. So if you're using an Archer and Olive B5 size notebook, you have 32 squares horizontally or from left to right, and you have 46 squares vertically or top to bottom. In comparison to the A5 size that we had here, we had 38 top to bottom and 26 left to right, which is a significant amount of space, especially when you're thinking about using this on a weekly basis. Honestly, looking at some of these spaces here, I think that I might be able to even go two weeks on one page if I wanted to. Not that I know that I would do that. So let's talk about the math and how I figure this out. I don't love math. Let me just put that out there. I've been terrible at it my entire life, but luckily you can do what I call easy math to figure out your pages and how you wanna set up your grid sheet here. The first ones that I always do is just splitting it right dead in half. And the way you do that is you just take your squares and you divide it into halves here. So for 32, that's going to be 16 squares with no gap in between. And then going down vertical down your page here to create these rows would be 23 spaces. When I set up my bullet journals, I also sometimes like to put my information into boxes. And because of that, I like to put some space in between each of those. So if I wanted to create a box and put a drop shadow, I give myself a little bit of extra space. So to do that, I'm just going to remove two squares from each one of these, subtract one from each side, and that's going to give me 15 squares with two spaces in between and another 15. You can use a calculator if you want and try to do some division, but you're going to get some decimal places as you do that. It's totally okay. What I like to do is just start to base my spaces off of here. And again, use multiples if I can. A great example is for our three columns that we're going to be setting up here. If I'm trying to figure out the best way to create three columns, well, I can do 10 spaces each, which takes me to 30, with one space in between, which gets me to 32. Sometimes I like to also just have variants in here for myself, which essentially is taking the one space that was separating each of these and just moving them out to the outside of these columns. And that way I can create three of these columns all together. If I wanted to set up six days during the week, I could just use this on my left and my right hand page, and I could have Monday through Friday with a space for the weekend. As I break them down into fours, I just go ahead and do easy math, which is multiplying eight times four, which gives us 32. I could break that down into sevens if I want with one space in between and one on the edge, or even sixes. Whether I'm doing five days during the week or if I wanna move into a Saturday and a Sunday, I'm going to need seven columns and seven columns would get very small on here if I try to make them all happen on one page. 
So what I'll mostly do would use something like this for column that I have here and use an extra column here for notes or tasks and leave the rest of those for Monday through Sunday. I also set up five squares here as well if I just wanted to do five days during the week. But as you can see, these get smaller and smaller as we come along. And that's usually where I tend to stop is five. I, I rarely go too much further with that, especially when I only have so much width. It's a little bit different though, when we go over to the vertical spacing or really the more horizontal squares or rectangles that we'd be setting up. Again, with my easy math, I just like to take my number 46 and I divide that in half, which is going to be 23 squares and that's gonna put me dead set in the center. I also wanted to be able to do two of those rows with a split in between, so I'm just going to take one away from each of these, put two in the middle here, and have 22 squares top and bottom. Setting up my three rows here, that's gonna be 15 in between with one here at the top, or I can break those down into 14 square boxes and have two spaces in between. And that'll take me all the way to the top and all the way down to the bottom as well. To set up four rows, I'm gonna break that down into tens with two in between. So we've got 10, 20, 30, 40. And then I needed to add that six, so two, four, six. So it's an easy way to create that. Or if I want, go 11 all the way up to the top with two left over. Five is going to be nine boxes here with one at the top or I can break them up into independent squares with seven with two spaces in between. And then the smallest space that I'm going to go, and I could maybe do seven, but I feel like it would get pretty small, would be six. And that's going to be seven squares going all the way up the page. For myself personally, it's rare that I really create a Saturday and a Sunday just because I don't have a whole lot that's really going on in the weekends. So most of the time I'll do Monday through Friday with a space for the weekends and just kind of put everything inside of there. Let me go ahead and fill this in with pen because I think that's going to give you a much better idea of how this whole entire thing is set up. And then we'll have a full breakdown of all of the spacing that we need for a B5. And then maybe let's try to use this setup a quick weekly just to see if I might like that size. Because these are longer pages, I need a longer ruler. If you'd like to pick up one of these long ones, I have a few different sizes on my Amazon shop, which is amazon.com slash shop slash men who bullet. So we have the entire page filled out now, and now you can see everything a lot better inside of here. All I have to do is just go through and just clean up the extra pencils that I have around here. It's super easy to do. I'll follow up and do that in just a minute. But now that we have this, I feel confident in going back into my bullet journal, fixing little mistakes that I'm missing <laughs> in those lines. And let's try to set up a quick weekly spread inside of this B5. I've never done it before, honestly. I am a little scared just because this is really big. Like this is much bigger than I feel like I've done for others, but I wanna make sure that it works for a weekly overview and some area for notes. So if I go ahead and plan this out, this is what I will use to try to figure out my page here and what I want from it, is I want to get a full week span, but know that I can't do that on just that one page. So I'm going to have to go across both of my pages to make that happen. So what I'm going to need is going to be three columns on the left and three columns on the right. Because the page is so incredibly long, I'm going to go ahead and split this probably into thirds. So I'll have to figure out what that looks like in just a second. And then over on this side, I'll do the same thing and just kind of follow that across. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut these in half just because I'll do some rapid locking. I like to give myself a little bit of space, but also a little bit of markers to know kind of how I'm going to do that. So let's go ahead and use our space sheet here now to figure out how we would set this up. So the first thing that I would do here is wanna get those three columns. So to get each one of those columns here, I have two different options. I'm going to go with my first. So to get those three columns down those, I need 10 spaces with one in between. So we're going to do 10, one, 10, one, 10. I'll have to remember that because it's a lot of ones and zeros, but we'll do the same thing on this side. 10 with one in between, 10, one in between, and then 10. To break this page down into thirds, 
it's kind of like invisible thirds because I don't want to necessarily block these off into three columns, but I need the space. So to do that, I need to use this top section here for the days during the week. And then I'll use this bottom one here for rows for notes. So to do that, I need to have 15 spaces here. And then I have the 15, 15 and one. But I'm not going to draw them out. Instead, I'm going to use 31 spaces here at the top to do that. Then to split this in half, I just need to figure out where that is, which over on this side would show me half, which would be 16 and 16. And we're going to set this up on the same page. We're going to do this foundationally because I feel like I might want to add stickers or stamps or something else like that to my journal. And I'm not going to be able to do that until I really understand what this page is going to look like. So what we're going to do is use this, draw it out real quick and see what it looks like. And I'll see whether or not I want to add anything extra to it. And if I would actually like it for my actual bullet journal. I'll put this off to the side so we can see as we do it. So the first thing I would do would count out these spaces. So it's going to be 10 with one in between all the way over. And that works out because I did my math correctly. And then instead of counting down 31 spaces, I'm just going to count up from the bottom because that's easier to count 15 than it is to count 31. And I'll be drawing that line across. And then I need to have 16 on each side to create that split for my rapid logging which is there. We'll do the same thing over here on this side. All right, so I can put this away now that we have all of our space there. And then what I'm gonna do is just quickly draw out all of my main spaces, which is going to be this across horizontally on the bottom. And I'm actually just gonna skip one space in here. So it looks like it's connected, but visually disconnected. And I'm just going to do that with the pencil because honestly, I can do that with my pen and I don't have to go over this twice. There's just certain times when I really like to use a pencil if I'm doing something a little bit more detailed. Like as you can see there, if I went with my pen and drew that straight line, I would have messed up what this looked like over here. So sometimes it's good to do that. But other times with these, it's just going to be vertical spaces. So I'll be good. So I'm going to go ahead and bring out my Faber-Castell black pit artist pen and draw this out real quick. It's always difficult drawing on the edge, especially when you're a lefty. So we'll go ahead and just clean that up. So foundationally, this is what we look like here, which is not too shabby. Then all we need to do is just create headers real quick. And then I'll probably have a good feeling for the rest of the space. One of my favorite big thick pens to use is actually this Unipen. It's a 1.2, which is just huge mungus. And I'm going to write in the days of the week across here. We'll write down notes over here on the side. And that's kind of all that I would do for a weekly spread. There are definitely different some ideas that we could do if we wanted to add stamps inside of here and kind of add extra things on here. We can add some extra color, maybe calendars. But this is kind of an easy way to set up this B5 size here. And I think that I could potentially use this. It is a lot of space. Don't get me wrong. But it was easy enough to set up using the entire cheat sheet that we have over here to set this bad boy up to be able to lay that out in just a few minutes. Yes, I sped it up a little bit just for this video because I don't think you want to watch me count and draw lines. But I would say in total, maybe that took me two or three minutes max just to get all the lines in here and everything set up. Now, if I was counting all of them individually as I went through here and trying to figure that out each time, it would have taken me much longer. Just kind of planning ahead, knowing what that looks like then executing it here on the page. I hope that you found today's video helpful and whether you're in a B5, A5, or even a square notebook, all of these sizes and shapes should work out for you. Just remember, write down your square numbers first, do some easy math and find the most common spacing that you think that you're going to use. Now, if you don't wanna make your own inside of your bullet journal and you wanna take the easy route, I've got you covered in the descriptions below. You can go ahead and sign up for my newsletter and get an A5 size printable sent directly to you that you can print out at home, cut out and paste or tape right into your A5 size notebook. Thank you so much for checking out today's video along with me and let me know how your spacing goes in the comments below and how you use them inside of your bullet journal. I'll talk to you later and happy planning.